Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru. So in this example, we're going to take a look at using Spring Profiles. And what I'm going to look at is I'm going to create a fake data source. And it's pretty common as we migrate a Spring application through the various stages of enterprise development, from development to QA to production that we're going to be using different data sources. And I want to focus just on that. We're not going to worry about properties at this point in the lesson. I want to focus on how we're going to use the profile. So I have a little example set up here. I'm going to show you how we set up the spring configuration for profiles to work in, in this case. There's actually several options that we can use, but I'm going to show you one specific example here. So we're going to jump over to IntelliJ now and take a look at setting up profiles for a, a fake data source. Okay, so what I have here is I have an interface called fake data source, and it just has one method to return back a connection info. So nothing nothing too, here, too uh, difficult here, and, and this is designed to mimic the data source interface of the, the Java specification. So we do have a data source interface for JDBC, that all the major databases implement an implementation for, and we'll use configurations of that as we migrate for a data source. So in this case, I'm just kind of mocking that out, giving us an example to work with here. And what I have is I've set up a class here called dev data source, and you can see it just returns back the string, I'm the development data source. And I have one called QA, it says I'm the QA data source and on the prod data source. So I have three implementations of this. Now, when I go to configure this for Spring, naturally I'm gonna mark all these. I'll start, with, start off with the dev one. First thing I'd wanna do is mark this as a component in Spring, so the Spring context will pick that up. Now, what we wanna do here is we wanna do an app profile, and we'll call him dev. So now the profile names, they're not chiseled in stone anywhere inside of Spring. So any string value is going to work for the profile. So I'm gonna call this guy dev, and this will be my dev data source. So when this, the profile dev is active, this bean will get pulled in into the Spring context. If the dev profile is not active, the Spring configuration is gonna completely ignore this bean. It's not gonna get brought into the context. Now let's do the same with prod. Just work our way down the line. And do the same for QA. So the annotations can be done in any order. I could do profile first, and then component, or component, and then profile. That doesn't matter how you annotate the classes. But you do want to be consistent in the string that you use. So that string value does need to be consistent across your classes. So if I add other components for the QA, profile that I wanted to use, I'd have to be consistent in naming those QA. So I, I couldn't spell out quality assurance for one and expect those to work together. Okay, just to recap here, I created a fake data source interface and then I had three implementations of those. And by marking the implementations as component, they became Spring Managed Components if I tell Spring to do a component scan on that package. So in that case, Spring's gonna to need to know which one to wire up. So if we're just going by type for interface, if we were to run that without profile information, it, it'd blow up. It, it would, Spring would see too many beans implementing that type and wouldn't know which one to wire up. So by giving it a profile, Spring will know exactly which bean we want. So if we set prod to active, then Spring will wire up prod and it's gonna ignore dev and QA. Likewise, if we set dev to active, it's going to ignore prod and QA. So this is a very powerful feature of Spring and it allows us to compose the, the composition of our application. So we can compose in a, a different data source, so we can compose in a different JMS broker. So that because we're coding to an interface, we're able to take these components and swap them in out and using profiles is a very powerful option inside of Spring that we can utilize to tell tell the Spring Framework to tell the inversion control container exactly which component we want at runtime. 